The impedance of the radio station, transmitter or receiver must be well matched to the antenna's impedance if we want maximum available power to be delivered to antenna. The return loss and SWR measurements show us the match of the system. A poorly matched antenna will reflect costly RF energy which will not be available for transmission and will instead end up in the transmitter. This extra energy returned to the transmitter will not only distort the signal but it will also affect the efficiency of the transmitted power and the corresponding coverage area. Return loss and SWR both display the match of the system, but they show it in different ways. The return loss displays the ratio of the reflected power to reference power in decibels. The return loss view is usually preferred over the SWR linear scale because it's easier to compare a small and large number on a logarithmic scale. Looking at this table, more than 20 decibel system return loss is considered very efficient as only less than 1% of the power is returned and more than 99% of the power is transmitted. In that case, the SWR is around 1.2. For radio amateur usage, return loss more than 14 decibels is acceptable. This is adequate to SWR of 1.5, which means that 4% of the power is returned and 96% of the power is transmitted. Zero decibels return loss represent an open or a short antenna terminal and 45 or more decibels return loss will be close to a perfect match. Many different methods can be used to measure standing wave ratio or SWR. Professionals usually use a vector network analyzer or frequency analyzer with sweep signal generator and directional coupler. In this video I will show you very cheap and very good method for antenna characterizing which means measuring the return loss versus frequency and usable antenna bandwidth like measuring with much much more expensive state-of-the-art measuring equipment. This is my very simple and very good setup for antenna characterization. Here is noise generator, noise source, which I purchased from eBay for $20. Here is SWR bridge, which cost me $28 from eBay. The developer of the noise source and SWR bridge is Bravo Golf 7 Tango Bravo Lima, radio amateur from China. SWR bridge is connected to RF input of AirSpy SDR, which costs less than $200. This is 50 ohm dummy load and this is connector for antenna which we want to characterize. First of all, I connect the noise generator to SWR bridge without anything connected on a DUT port, device under test port, so it represents maximum SWR, maximum standing wave ratio and minimum return loss. And you can see on the monitor here I set 500 megahertz span with a center of 275 megahertz and this is the spectrum full with noise without anything connector connected on the DUT port of SWR bridge. Then I connect 50 ohms dummy load to the DUT port of uh, SWR bridge which represent a minimum SWR 
and you can see on a spectrum screen here minus 70 to minus 73 decibels it's rainy day rainy weekend outside and I'm stuck inside my house so I will characterize few antennas in my room instead of outside where I expect to achieve better performance here is some antennas and from left to right the first is telescopic magnetic antenna which means that I can tune this antenna to very frequency from 100 megahertz to 500 megahertz according to uh, its uh, own dimensions the second antenna is Nagoya NA771 dual band antenna for handheld transceivers third is Nagoya UT108 dual band for 2 meters and 70 centimeters band fourth antenna is Nagoya UT106 also dual band but a little shorter the fifth antenna is my homemade antenna for 2 meters band it's 50 centimeters copper rod on magnetic base and the sixth antenna I will characterize today is original antenna for handheld transceiver Guangsheng testing VHF UHF antennas inside room needs some improvising methods to be used so I will use some magnetic metal stuff from my kitchen to play as counterpoise for magnetic antennas this is my homemade antenna for 2 meters band with quarter wave overall length it's about 50 centimeters length and made of piece of copper wire about 2 millimeters in diameter soldered to the base of old junky antenna just to use magnetic base now I connect my homemade magnetic antenna to the SWR bridge and this is the spectrum we can see a deep hole here the deeper the hole the better return loss and better SWR for antenna now I will switch the better resolution to 50 megahertz this is the spectrum of the return loss of my homemade antenna for 2 meters band and we can see here about 24 24 dB 24 decibels and over here on 146 megahertz uh, it is about minus 52 minus 52 so minus 52 to minus 24 it's 28 
28 dB return loss. We can check to online calculator 28 dB return loss is equal to SWR standing wave ratio of 1 to 1.083 which is perfect for this homemade antenna. This fantastic number of uh, standing wave ratio of 1 to 1.08 we achieved on a frequency of 146 megahertz and we can check the bandwidth of the antenna. I said before that acceptable bandwidth for the antenna is 14 decibels of return loss and we, he we have here minus 24 minus 24 dB return loss and we can find minus, four, minus 39 minus 39 this is this point here is this point 144 megahertz point 4 to 147.8 megahertz which means that the bandwidth of the antenna is almost 3.4 megahertz for SWR better than 1.5 or better than 14 decibels return loss. This is fantastic the results for this homemade antenna. The second antenna I will characterize is telescopic magnet antenna which means that the length of the antenna can be changed and this is the minimum length about 162 millimeters and here is the frequency of the antenna 422 megahertz and it's about 15 decibels return loss which means that around this frequency antenna has SWR are around 1.5 1 to 1.5 so I will will change the length increase the length of the antenna and we can see on the monitor that resonance of the antenna goes down so with this length of the antenna it resonates on 411 megahertz if I increase further it will resonate on lower frequency next antenna I am testing is Nagoya 108 dual band for 2 meters and 70 centimeters antenna and here what I get on a frequency spectrum for return loss we can see a deep hole here around 142.2 megahertz with about 18 decibels return loss yes it's about 18 decibels return loss and here around 145 it has around 10 10 decibels which mean that SWR is 
around 1.9, which is also acceptable. And over here on 70 centimeters band, we can see that antenna is resonate on around 449 megahertz, 448. With SWR about 1 to 1.9. That's Nagoya UT 108. Next antenna I'm testing is Nagoya UT 106 dual band antenna for 2 meters and, and 70 centimeters. It is according advertising for this antenna, but we will find we will find that antenna is resonate around 164 megahertz with a good SWR with a good return loss because it's about 20 dB which means that SWR will be 1 to 1.2 the second resonance is around 474 and 492 megahertz with good SWR also the next antenna I'm testing is original dual band antenna from handheld transceiver Quansheng and we can see that it resonates around 145 MHz as declared and it has SWR around 1 to 1.5 but interesting there are no resonance on 70 centimeters band only on 2 meters band with a good SWR and good return loss finally I'm testing antenna for handheld transceiver Nagoya 771 NA771 but I found that it is not so good as they advertised there are some a little dip around 142-43 megahertz but with poor results maybe it is because I held this antenna in, at my hand but it is for handheld transceiver and previous antenna original from Kuangsheng uh, handheld transceiver was far better than this. <laughs>